Yes, well, I'm Rick Perley. I'm a scientist at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, um, resident in Socorro, and I'm a fairly heavy user of this facility here, the Very Large Array. It's a camera. It's, uh, it performs the same function uh, as your regular camera that you use to take pictures. The reason we have to, this camera is a very large camera. It's physically very large, up to 35 or 21 miles across. And the reason it's so large is because the wavelengths, the radio wavelengths that we are receiving are so long. The resolution of an array, any optical device, whether it's an optical camera like you have, or your cell phone camera, or a radio array, depends on how many wavelengths there is across the object, the, uh, across the array, or across the lens. And since radio wavelengths are extremely long, uh, many, many inches to meters, to many feet or many meters, we need to have a very large lens. So we connect together the signals from all these various antennas and replicate effectively a lens. And in a computer, we make an image very similar to the way an optical uh, device, such as your cell phone camera, uh, works. It's the same principles, just done in a rather different way. The, um, these large telescopes use a single reflector to form a, an image. And uh, if we, we could do this in the radio with this, uh, in exactly the same kind of way, but in order to get the same kind of resolution that those instruments do, we would have to build a, re a single reflector about 20 miles across. So you don't, have to, you don't have to be a mechanical engineer to realize that, that, that you can't do that on the surface, anywhere, certainly not on the surface of the Earth. So what we do instead, uh, instead of having a single reflector, we have a large number of little ones. And then the process of image formation, which uh, for a single lens like Hubble or your cell phone camera, is done with a lens on a, on a, on a focal plane, we, res uh, re uh, let's see how best to put this, we make up the image in a computer on a uh, digital, you might call it a digital uh, array, uh, by combining the signals in a way that's completely analogous to what a real lens does, or a reflector uh, in, a, in an optical telescope. So the principles are actually the same, it's just that we rather apply them in a rather, a rather different way. All of them make use of the, of the uh, wavelength uh, of light, of, the, of this particular characteristic of electromagnetic radiation. Radio waves, uh, um, optical waves, they're really the same phenomenon, they differ by their wavelength. And since we are using a long wavelength, we need a really big lens. Um, the array was designed to provide about the same resolution as an optical telescope does. So about one arc second, or a little better than one arc second. That's the angular diameter of a dime at a few miles distance. And this is sort of like a gold standard in, in astronomy. Of course, higher resolution is always better because the objects are very far away, as you noted, and we need a, a high resolution, which means large apertures, in order to detect and resolve the radiation. And by resolve, I mean see the features, not just identify a star or a point or a galaxy, but to take a look at the distribution of the brightness. Because to do physics on these objects, we need to do more than just detect them. We need to resolve them. And to resolve them, we need to have higher resolution, which is one reason this telescope is so big. Uh, well, first of all, let's address the off the beaten path. We've we, we got to be far away from all those radio devices that people love. Cell phones, uh, smart refrigerators, smart cars. Sa well, we can't get away from satellites. That is an unfortunate, from our point of view, fact of life. Um, so we tend to be uh, locate radio observatories in as empty areas as we can. Uh, we are at a very high elevation here, fairly high elevation, 7,000 feet. But that's because the atmosphere uh, disturbs the propagation of the uh, radio signals that we're trying to receive. So we want to be as high as possible to get above as much air as we can. 
And the third factor uh, is far south uh, because a, a telescope located near the North Pole can only see half of the sky. That's uh, similar at South Pole, the other half. So you want to be relatively, uh, relatively close to the equator. And in the United States, uh, we're in the southern part of the country, fairly close to the southern border. Uh, so when you put together high, uh, I forgot to mention dry, but that should be fairly obvious, uh, and uh, lonely and south, uh, this is about as good a place uh, to be located as you can. Uh, now, what do people expect to see when they get here? Uh, an old lake bed. We are sitting on a uh, lake bed dating from the glacial era. This, we, if this was, what, 20,000 years ago, we would all be in water swimming around. Um, so that means it's, um, it's, it's quite flat, which is what we need, uh, because we move these antennas around. They, uh, uh, I had mentioned earlier that the resolution is given by the size of, of your lens, or in our case, the size of the array. Uh, and I mentioned 21 miles across, but we actually have four different, uh, what we call configurations. The antennas are movable, and so when we want to lower our resolution and look at fuzzy objects, we have all the antennas close together. When we want to have super high resolution to get the, the most discrimination on the structure of these objects, we have the antennas far apart. So if you're going to move antennas and they weigh about 200 tons each, uh, you need railroad tracks. And so we have out there behind me a double set of railroad tracks leading in three different directions. And there are two transporters, which are special built machines, uh, which uh, uh, move along these railroad tracks, go underneath the antennas, pick them up, and carry them off to another place. And we do this about every four months in order to change uh, the, the ray, uh, array's resolution. Um, first of all, uh, we're open to everybody. Uh, we in really, truly invite the public to come to see us and to learn what we do. Uh, almost, I'm, I'm sure all of my fellow scientists are more than happy to explain at considerable length the kinds of projects that they're working on. Uh, we are deeply thankful to the public for funding. Um, I mean, I have a wonderful job. I, I, I get to explore imagination. I, I, I get to ramble around basically um, undirected uh, in order to understand how to use these instruments and to learn how to how, how they can work better for the purpose for which they were they were designed which is basically to understand the universe we live in it's a big universe it's it's, it's unimaginably large and we'll never be able to go to these distant galaxies and sample them directly all we can ever know is what the radiation that comes to us by natural means. And so we scientists uh, in the last hundred odd years have developed these methods uh, to do this. So we spent the day at the VLA and for a little while there they made this get off the field because of a storm. A storm came through and they said if there's lightning within 10 miles you have to come in because it's dangerous out there in the VLA when there's a storm. So we did that and then we waited about 10 minutes and it sprinkled a little bit and then they said okay all clear and it passed over so it's been kind of storming off and on all day not too bad but right now it's getting bad again i don't know if you can see all of the clouds in the sky around us and this raining stuff and now of course toby wants to get the drone out and fly it in the storm and 
yeah, we're not even supposed to be out on the field walking when there's a storm, but he wants to get out in the storm and fly a drone. So attracting lightning to himself because apparently getting hit by lightning once in his life wasn't enough. Let's try for two. Um, anyway, he's over there across the street flying the drone and that's what's happening there. But we did have a good day at the VLA. The weather was pretty good for most of the day. And we got to talk to some people who had gone to the Trinity site. Oh, look, there's my sticker. They went to the Trinity site, so they told us about it. They actually did come out for Balloon Fiesta, um, and then they went to the Trinity site today, and then they went to the VLA after that, um, and then they're going to go back to Minnesota, uh, I guess, tomorrow or whenever. And we went to the um, gift shop and got this cool shirt. It says, I'm made of stardust. Stardust. Oh, okay, it's mirror imaged because I'm doing the, the selfie mode. And then on the sleeve it says, Very Large Array, New Mexico, USA. Oh. What? Toby wants me to drive the car now while he's flying the drone. So I gotta go. And we'll talk to you later. Bye! So while Shelly's getting her jacket out, I'm gonna show you this. We went another uh, 20 miles west to a town called Datil, I think it's pronounced D-A-T-I-L. But I came here because there's a place literally on right on the edge of town called the Eagle Guest Ranch Cafe. And they supposedly uh, sell the best steaks in town. Uh, well, those are the best steaks for, you know, 50 miles around, so. We're gonna try it out. Pretty rustic little place, very traditional. What'd you get? Hmm? What did you get? Roast beef. How was it so far? Good. Yeah. So I got the, I don't know, I think it's called the big ass steak. I mean, <laughs> but it's, um, it's pretty good size, it's very tender and uh, it is very good. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish it.